Uh, what do I want to say first? Today, I'm going to give my thoughts on Ariana's latest single, lead single for her upcoming album, which is entitled Eternal Sunshine, um, and that should be coming some point in early 2024. I realise I've not posted, like, a proper video essay. Oh, I've not posted... Oh, I've not posted a proper video essay in five months, which is in... Same. I wanted to give you guys something a bit more freeform. Uh, initially when Ariana announced that she was coming up with new music and this is actually interesting because I have been writing a video essay particularly on like and I use the word appropriation in a neutral sense I think it can be used in a neutral and negative sense. How Ariana has been able to appropriate and embody R&B music throughout her whole discography and how that affects how she's perceived as an artist by her fans, by critics, by, by organisations like the Grammys where she gets often entirely snubbed. So that's going to be in the work. So this is really kind of just like a part one. When I saw that she was coming up with new music and the presence of certain key figures who are black, uh, who are in the R&B genre, like Victoria Monet, Tommy Brown, uh, Leon Thomas, like they weren't necessarily part of the production of this album as of what we know right now. That was a cause for concern and I'll definitely get into that in more in part two. What I'm going to be looking at specifically here is when I saw that this song was a house track, I was like, oh, okay. When I heard the song, I was like, oh, okay. This for me is very Break My Soul coded. Um, and that's fine. We understand when we look at like how the reemergence of house music has been coming back in. Uh, Beyonce is not the only person or the singular part in that uh, the, the return of this trend. I think she is the the key motivator. But even before that, you had Chromatica by Lady Gaga and Ariana Grande was featured there. I just love doing this thing with my hair. Look how long my locks have gone compared to my last video. That's for me, what I wanted to kind of come on here and talk about is the intention and the use of the house genre. And I think I'm an amazing person because honestly, if you go on my TikTok, uh, at St. Adamson on TikTok, I post a lot more there than I do here, which I'm going to kind of resolve this year. But I've been talking a lot about the death of disco music, how cultural context is important in conversations around pop culture. And I'm about to upload Let's see if I can do it at the same time. I'm about to upload a video talking about how disco emerged into house. But music, not necessarily popular music, but music genres have a lot of history and struggle attached to them. I can do a whole deeper video on that, um, but I want to talk a bit about... Mm, do I want to do this because it's just going to make the video go longer, but I'm just going to put it up. Amir Bakara, he writes how popular music which is an appropriation of black music like blues jazz those music are intrinsically tied with how black people exist in the west how they were able to find self-determination how they were able to preserve their cultures and form new cultures for me it's a very similar thing with a genre like house which are intrinsically tied with how black and queer and black queer liberation has been sought right and how that's been able to be attained how that's been able to be imagined and seen as a possibility for so many people in light of that i think it's super interesting how ariana positions herself how she positions herself in using this music which again it has become a trend but my only thing is i feel like the the key figures that have been really important in the re-emergence of house music so Beyonce and Lady Gaga, let's just say those two for now. Lady Gaga is queer. Lady Gaga has, at the fabric of how, like, how the fabric of her celebrity was knit was including queer, queer music, queer art, queer messaging, appealing to the gays. And that's why I think, like, like on a separate sense, like, Chromatica was definitely affected by the pandemic. And I feel like her last big album really to me was art pop again it's because of just how intrinsically tied she is with that community and another thing i wanted to bring up as well like june the 19th 2023 lady gaga is showing where she is highlighted and i mean it could be a little bit performative but like no one no one else is fucking doing that she's talking about the books that she's reading um and, and again like it just shows that she's she's being informed she is she is informed and Lady Gaga is speaking both through 
experience, but information and the pursuit of knowledge. Beyonce. Beyonce! She has made it so clear. Everyone's been like, oh, you know, she hasn't released the visuals and she's been giving us nothing. Beyonce has made it clear, clear who this album is for, what were the, or like, like what the origins were the, or are of this album, why she made it, what were the intention and what were the, the influences behind that. She has made that so clear. Com like, the clearest part of this Renaissance album. Is that has been the clearest part of the Renaissance era. Who it's for and why she's made it. I feel like when you have intention exemplified on such a high standard, I mean, we can't really compare everyone to Beyonce, can we? But because we have that example set for us, and again, the, the social importance behind house and the genres of music. And to be honest, it's only like, unless it's only a small bit I take issue with, no. Um, but again, I just think these, these conversations are important. And I kind of always get scared when I'm like, talk, like doing critical analysis of like, oh no, you're just chronically online. Well, yes, but like also, this shit is important. And if no one's gonna highlight history, if no one's gonna engage in cultural criticism um, from an informed place, one, I better do it. And I, I want you to see how in doing this thing of like, it's not that deep, or participating in, well, that's what it is, participating in anti-intellectualism, we fundamentally are dismissing the struggle and the history of marginalised groups and how they emerge in like a cultural setting. So, okay, let me be really clear here. My problem is how Ariana Grande appropriates the house music genre in order to basically go like, oh, don't talk about me and my new boyfriend. Because that's what the like the main critique that has been leveled like at her in the past year. And to me, I, I don't even think it's a critique. Like, I, I don't think it's a critique. Like, put yourself in a morally compromising position and people had shit to talk about, shit to say. It didn't affect your streams. Like, one thing I was thinking about, like, in comparison is like, for example, Taylor Swift with Reputation, like, that was actually, that, w mm, okay, that was actually peak. And, like, it, it's similar in the sense where we don't have the full picture, but babe, like, we have enough information here to go, like, mm, like, even though we don't have the full context here, like, come on. And I mean, there's been other criticisms that I think have made up, like, what 2023 in Ariana Grande's celebrity has meant. For example, all the leaks, see her doing Wicked, and her divorce, which is interestingly absent here. And like, that's totally fine. I'm pr I think I'm pretty sure there was like a clause where they can't talk about it and the whole discourse around her body. What's interesting in is how she like, kind of equates the two. Celebrity status doesn't give people entitlement to comment on your body, yes. But then when you're kind of like, celebrity means that you can't really comment on me being in a moral compromising situation. That just sounds like you're not wanting to take accountability. And it's like a, a, a celebrity telling us like, don't talk about me and my man. It, it, it just doesn't work for me when you're like a multimillionaire celebrity. When you are a celebrity engaging in a parasol, like, like I think we use these words like on the internet and we just use them as buzzwords, but like, there is a parasocial relationship and like not all para like para parasocial relationships can be neutral in nature. We weaponizing it and doing this false equivalence is irresponsible because again like all the all the discourse now centers around everyone talking about her spongebob man and all of this stuff. One I think what's getting lost is obviously the whole body shaming thing. I think that is quite disgusting and that's rightfully so because like she came back in this video dancing and with abs and she was basically like fuck you guys this is where like it kind of leads nicely into my uh my video essay the actual proper one i'm gonna do but in the, she posted a little teaser and it was all these critics getting together talking about her music and stuff like that and one thing i think she's really missed and let's see again this conversation is an incomplete sentence we have still got a body of work to come and i'm really looking forward to that she has not leveled one criticism to the incredibly the incredibly targeted comments at her music the production the people behind it 
and how there is a very, very strong racial undertone. Niggas hacked her website and was like, yeah, we want lush production, no more Tommy Brown cheap trap beats. And if you ever had the opportunity to really clock people on their tee and say yes and, it would have been standing up for your music, like the, the, your musical collaborators. Like, girl, they hacked your website. You definitely saw that. And let's see if it's going to be addressed. But like, again, can you see how like, we're, we're focusing on SpongeBob and like, there's actually like, and so then now the use of house seems a bit insidious because you're making it about your personal life and basically trying to justify your morally grey decisions. We all make morally grey decisions. Let's keep it in the closet. And I mean, I guess you, I mean, go, you tried, but like, again, you're a celebrity, but like, it, it like, like, you can't have your cake and eat it. There's more serious things for you to talk about in using house. And like, that's what like, again, I'm gonna, I'm, I think I'm wrapping up now. But like, again, I'm gonna go back to Beyonce because I think she's done it fantastically. One criticism that was leveled to her, and again, like, that's what, like, cultural criticism can be nuanced, it can have different interpretations. There was a conversation about her music, um, about Break My Soul, and when she was like, um, um, I just fell in love, I just quit my job. Um, then the word about her boss, but was not hard. People were basically saying, oh, like, how dare Beyonce, like, you're a billionaire, you literally wouldn't even understand our struggle. And that's so true. But then also, I think it's because Beyonce is intentionally trying to take herself out of the music, respecting the origins of what house music is. Like, it's it's music for the people, those who are margin marginalised, those who are oppressed. And like, even though, yeah, it's a bit funny, like some bits, like some bits in Renaissance in terms of, like, okay, no, no, not Renaissance, I'm not gonna necessarily critique Renaissance, cause that's, but even in like, so for example, it was everything is love. I'm good on any okay, good on and then like, they compare themselves to Malcolm X and it's like, no, no. I, I kind of blame Jay-Z for like that dodgy political messaging. And then they try to lock us out of it. They start inventing words like, you know, capitalists and you know, things like that, I mean, you know, we've been called nigger and monkeys and shit. I don't care. I don't, they, those words y'all come up with, y'all got to come up with stronger words. Can we see how, in comparison, actually the decentering of Beyonce, the decentering of self um, in her, in Renaissance? Because really, like Renaissance, and I've talked about that, and I will, and I need to do more videos and talk about Renaissance. Um, uh, there is some parts there about Beyonce, but like a lot of it, really, really isn't like. Um, and I think that's why she also did like the concert film to show that like the music is like applicable to so many people and it touches so many people's lives. Um, I just think there is a social responsibility that like it's quite hard to juggle as a celebrity, but like it's 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 important to have these conversations. So like artists can artists upcoming just like or even as consumers we can just be more aware of like oh, like, I've clocked your tea, like, I've clocked this, and, like, that criticism is actually a healthy part of pop culture, like, discourse. If you follow my TikTok, that's, like, my line. Um, is that a finished sentence? I'm gonna, oh, okay, one more thing I will say. Why I also say this, because, again, I've been writing the video essay, and I've become really connected to Ariana Grande's music, like, positions, Sweetener and Thank You Next and Positions have really, like, especially Sweetener, Sweetener is, right, Ariana knows how to make like trauma-informed music and there's a whole lot more discussion that we can have on that like and I'll probably do in the, in the in the part two that can come out really poignantly embracing all types of genres and wielding all together types of influences and leverage it for positivity and I think she's doing that here the album is called Eternal Sunshine it's a reference to I think a Jim Carrey movie it was mac miller's favorite film like so i do think she wants to like create positivity but i just think with house as this new trend let's be a bit more intentional like let's let's really make sure that we're honoring us honoring a sound that means so much to people and a sound that she's not necessarily like used in a way that like 
I think is intrinsically tied to our core. For example, Lady Gaga is queer, Beyonce, a lot of it has been like specifically tied to um, her ancestor, Uncle Johnny. What it is, it's the picking up of house, which is a trend, whilst also abandoning, you know, the R&B, hip hop, urban sounds, which I'm, I'm not sure about. I've not heard the full album, but what from what we know, it's been, a lot of it's been produced by Max Martin and Isla, I think that's how you pronounce it. If I'm wrong on that, I'm sorry. Can you see how the, there's a conundrum here? You're picking up a sound and then you're kind of just being like, I don't want R&B anymore. Do you see what I mean and why as a black person, it's because it's the use of genres that are so intrinsically tied to blackness to why this is a potential issue. The video says it's gonna eat guys like, oh, I've, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's being like, it's, it's there. I've done like a good chunk of it, but it's gonna be good. My next video is probably gonna be, I'm gonna do a little Nas X one and it's gonna be a bit more of an informal one. I wanna get back to like the long form shit. I love it. I love it. I, 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 yeah. So I'm gonna do a little last X video. It might even come out the day after this. Like it will come out very soon. And then my next video essay is Glee, uh, and it's gonna be like the end of the intersection, intention, unintentional, unintentionally intersectional. And I'm gonna be looking at the Glee episode, end of twerk. It's gonna be great. 2024 is gonna be great for me, and you guys get to witness it. Um, like, subscribe, do the all. Like, subscribe. Subscribe and um, follow me on TikTok as well. Yeah.